Paul Melly. He's a consulting fellow of the think tank Chatham House's Africa program in London. Paul, really appreciate your time. Do you think this latest move from the president to dissolve the constitutional court will do anything to stop these demonstrations? It probably won't immediately stop the demonstrations, but it is the biggest concession he's made so far. Up to now, he's been basically offering the formation of a national unity government, and the opposition don't really trust that. They think that just joining, sending a few ministers to join uh, the existing government uh, wouldn't really give them much influence, wouldn't really shift the political dial, if you like. Whereas the dissolution of the constitutional court is very important because in that parliamentary election in March, uh, the constitutional court overturned the result in 30 constituencies. And uh, the result of that was that it boosted uh, the score, the number of parliamentary people from the government camp in parliament. And that really um, brought uh, anger to a head. It's that that was the final, uh, as, as people sometimes say, the straw that broke the camel's back. Mm -hmm. There'd been a lot of grievances, a lot of frustration going on for many months, a lot of, of feeling that the president wasn't really providing the leadership needed. There have been corruption scandals. Of course, there's the huge problem of jihadist terrorism and intercommunal tensions across the north and the center of the country with many deaths. And all those frustrations came to a head when the constitutional court basically changed the parliamentary election result to favor the government. So by dissolving the court, um, President Keita has opened the way for a possible reversal of that decision. Um, a West African mediating team has proposed that those 30 constituencies where the results were changed, the election should be rerun. And it looks as if he's ready to do that. So that's a bit of a step, but it probably won't be enough to end the violence now. So, Paul, uh, just I want to focus a little on the opposition, because we're seeing reports that several of uh, the opposition members have been arrested. It's not stopping others, though, from mobilizing this continued call for change and protests. What's Mali's opposition then offering people in the country that's different to what the government um, is doing at the moment? Well, it's not really a policy change. It's, it's a sense that when President Keita was elected back in 2013, um, he promised strong national leadership. And through all the many crises that Mali has undergone since then, there's a feeling that he hasn't always offered that strength. He hasn't always been really giving a strong political lead, going to the regions in crisis, um, very often he's left a lot of the the work in trying to mediate solutions to the crisis. He's left a lot of that to his prime ministers, and he's changed prime minister a number of times. So um, all of that's produced a lot of disappointment and frustration, mm -hmm. and it's particularly complicated because Mali has a strong democratic culture. You know, in at the beginning of the 1990s, there was a people power revolution, basically, and a, and a military intervention to establish democracy and end, end dictatorship. And ever since that point, um, Malians are used to having their democratic freedoms. And so um, the present mm -hmm. situation is extremely tense. And the fact that some opposition politicians have been arrested is a, is a, is a bit of a cultural shock, really. That, that's okay. not something... Sorry, Paul, we, we're just running out of time, and I want to try to get this uh, question in very quickly. How are Mali's neighbors responding to what's happening there, considering there's a military campaign in the region to combat extremist elements in the Sahel? Well, there's a very strong culture in West Africa of, of the whole region managing crises. So ECOWAS, which is the regional bloc, the sort of West African equivalent of the European Union, if you like, sent a mediation mission, and they have come up with proposals uh, to try and end this political crisis. And right at the heart of that was this this proposal that these 30 contentious elections should be rerun. And so if Keita's moving a bit towards that, that shows the influence that the West Africans uh, can bring. There is an acceptance generally across the region that your neighbor, your problem is also your neighbor's problem. And so... Um, all of the surrounding countries, Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, uh, Niger, Nigeria, 
everybody is involved in this mediation effort. Uh, people aren't taking one side or another. The, the West Africans are trying to lead the mediation and the international community is backing them in that. So um, the EU, the UN, everybody else is, as it were, standing behind the West mm -hmm. African mediation sure. effort to try and resolve this crisis. Okay, Paul Melly, live to us there from London. Really appreciate your take and your insight on that. Thank you very much.